Hello, viewer. Welcome to yet another interesting episode of the program Aqua Farming. Aqua Farming is a program that brings you all that is in the water, be it shells, crabs, frogs, shrimps, and whatsoever it is that is in the water. The rest assured that on this program, we make sure we bring to you some important and, of course, lucrative way that you can be able to sustain yourself in finding another means of making money through the aquaculture practicing. And today, We'll be looking at the ornamental fish business. The ornamental fish business is one type of business that was able to survive even during the pandemic. You can easily start this business with minimal capital. Not only that, but for those of you who have a hobby of keeping ornamental fish, this business can be an exciting activity to do because you will pursue a hobby as well as making money. It is fun, isn't it? So what do you need to know before getting into this business? On this episode of Aqua Farming, follow us as we will help you answer all your questions regarding ornamental fish business. Take a look. What distinguishes between shrimp and prawn? The shrimp business in the world is a multi-billion dollar industry which has been practiced in Asia, in South America, in North America, but in Africa, we have not really delved a lot into shrimp farming. The first attempt of shrimp farming in Africa was done in the Gambia. When they attempted to culture what you call a species of shrimp, they call the Pinus monodon. It's a giant shrimp, and that is why it's good for commercial purposes. So this shrimp escaped the, the farmers or the farm help in Gambia. They were working on the farm, had a problem with management. So what happened? they released most of the shrimps from the farm. And most of those shrimps found their way into Nigerian territorial waters. You see, anything that comes to Nigeria is blessed, especially when it comes to animals, and humans too. So when they got into Nigerian space, the size you find in Nigeria is much more bigger than their cousins that are originally indigenous to Nigerian waters. You know, when you have, uh, let's see for example, if you have me living in an environment and you have, this my friend, this my friend, and a guy here, coming into that same environment that I am staying in, you know what will happen? I won't be able to eat. I won't be able to function. Because of their sheer size, they will muzzle me out of my environment and I can't eat. So which means my growth is uh, stunted. So that's what happened to, to um, Phoenix Moroda when he entered Nigeria. Now, next slide. Now, but in other countries, every country has a species that is a species of that country. Pinus Monodon came into Nigeria, but we also had other shrimps that were here, the pink shrimp, the brown shrimp, etc. In Japan, it's called Pinus Japanicus. In China, it is called Pinus Chinensis. In Vietnam, it is called Pinus Venemai. And in, uh, ah, that's this country, they call it the banana shrimp. So each country has its own. And it's a very, very viable tool for employment generation and youth restiveness. You go into shrimp farming and see how we can use this to employ youth in the Niger Delta. So people like me and some others were sent to China, Thailand, to go and learn shrimp, how to farm shrimp. And the beautiful thing is that we have the climate. Nigeria has most, one of the best weather in the world. I don't know. Uh, eh? Yes. 
This heat is a blessing. You know why it's a blessing? Temperature is what stimulates reproduction, hatching of eggs, and growth. Because it heats your physiology by energizing your body metabolism. Because when, the, when your body metabolism is energized, you digest food uh, faster. So temperature is a veritable tool for farmers, especially breeders and growers. So that's why the heat is a blessing in disguise. We have water resources. We have 853 kilometers of coastline all the way from Lagos to Calabar. Let me delve into fish a bit. You find out that if you're fishing in Lagos, you have more pelagic fish in our water. Pelagic fish are fish that swim at the surface. The massa fish are the ones that swim at the bottom. So when these nutrients come in from all the way from Mauritania, Gambia, Ghana, Republic of Benin, coming towards Lagos, you know that Nigeria has this very unique coastline. It calls. So when the nutrients get to Lagos, the nutrients are still floating. So most of the fish that can feed there are fish that feed at the surface. By the time it passes a place called Juju Point, before you get to the Cameroon axis, you find, Madam, you're laughing. <laughs> in fish, in, in fisheries, for those who do, for those who do seamanship and nautical sciences, which I would love some, some of you to do, it's, it's lovely. Nautical sciences or the marine engineering, both men and women. You find out that it's lovely. When you pilot a ship going towards towards the Juju point, that's where you have turbulence. There's what you call it's a zone of upwelling. So that's where there's a lot of nutrients deposited there. So when you get down to Calabar area, by the time they hit that wall, that Cameroon core, all the nutrients fall to the bottom. So you can have big fish as big as myself that eat at the bottom of the water. So when this is a different trolling method, when you're trolling fish along the Lagos worry axis than when you're trolling fish in Calabar. So they are different. Now, when you leave marine, you go to the fresh water. We have 550,000 hectares of water that is spread along the whole of Nigeria, from River Niger, River Benue, River Hedija, all over, Kaduna and the rest of them. And you can farm shrimps of fresh water origin. And then when you come to the Niger Delta, you can farm shrimps of marine and brackish origin. And then you have the land to do all this, both for fish, shrimp, agriculture, and all the rest of it. Before I continue, I hope all of you know that we have four different economies in this country. We have the green economy, we have the blue economy, we have the black economy, and we have the digital economy. The most dangerous here is the digital economy. If everybody in this room in the next 10, 15 years is not conversant with data analysis and digital skills, you'll be out of work. Because there's something, there's something that is facing man now. It's called artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence will take all your work away from you if you're not tech savvy. I'm not trying to make you afraid though, but from hairdresser to barber to vulcanizer to, to tailor to doctors to nurses to engineers, if you're not tech savvy, you won't have work to do. Even drivers, because there are cars now that are driven without nobody. On man helicopter, on man this, on man that, on man train, on man car. Very soon we soon have unmanned wives. Because you know, if you go to China, they have women now that you can buy that will not give you problem of bone straight, lipstick, eyebrow. Penis nodon, the pink shrimp, penis nochalis, keraterus, lobilostris, nematopalemon has status. You, you know this, you know crayfish? Those small, small ones that women use in cooking. 
That's what they call the Mantopalemon hystasis. Uh, Hastatus. It's, 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 it's. That's why I say leave the language. Just leave her. That's one. You find them more when you go towards Oron. That's where they bring them from. But we have tried now to see how we can farm it. But it's giving me a lot of headache. So I've left it alone. But we'll get it right. Next slide. Next slide. Then, for prawns, you have... If you go, ladies, if you go to the market, there are these prawns that are, that are big. That's Microbrachium volenuveni. It's smaller ones are called Macrobrachium Macrobrachium. Then you have Macrobrachium felicinum and Macrobrachium ducks, Congo River prawn. All these are found in Nigerian space. What you find in northern Nigeria most of the times is Macrobrachium volenuveni and Macrobrachium Macrobrachium. And you can farm these ones because I've done test farming uh, these things in Uyu, in Akwaibom State, and in Lagos, and it worked. So most people can take up this. Next slide. Next. Another thing is next slide. Another thing is manpower, viability of the market. Go next. Now. They are selling this, you must send requirements. You know, when Dr. Issa was talking, he mentioned requirements for fish farming. But even in prawn and shrimp farming, there are requirements. You must have, topography has arrived here again. The topography must be right. In English, the definition of topography is the shape of the ground and the grading of the slope in relation to the earth's surface. Is topography. In clear terms, Dr. Issa explained it to you flat, elevated. That's just the grammar there, but you must have that in mind. But another thing, instead of looking for um, fingerlings in the case of fish, you're not looking for post larvae. I will show you what post larvae looks like as we move. You must not design your farms. The way you design shrimp and prawn farms is different from the way you design, design fish farms. And then their feed is microalgae. Microalgae, like, you know, who, any fish farmer here will know what artemia is. Artemia, there is the nucleus artemia salini of a shrimp. What did your woman do? You know that there are these cysts that if they are in an, in an environment that is not okay for them, they cover themselves. In biology, they call it estivation or ecdysis. They cover themselves. Then when you put them in an environment where it's favorable, they remove that shell and come out. That's what happens to artemia when you aerate it and want, that's the the shell ones, when you erect it and you want to use it to feed your fish. That's just a simple technology. There is no magic. Then you must know the health management. Now, in, in the managing of the health of shrimps and prawns, it's the most difficult thing to do. Because before you enter, you know, in fish farming, if you enter a hatchery, you can enter without doing anything too serious. The fish will not, uh, survive, will not die. But in shrimp, your clothes carry bacteria. Even as we are sitting down here, we are carrying bacteria on your clothes. So those clothes, you have to remove them before you enter into your hatch. And wash your hand with potassium permanganate or salt so that you can remove this, the bacteria that you have on your hands. That's the same practice you are supposed to be doing when we do fish farming. But most of us don't do it. We just take it for granted because they say, that fish too hard. But there's no hardness in life. And that's when you talk about biosecurity and quarantine. In quarantine, when you bring your shrimps and prawns from the wild, you know, in catfish, you stabilize them with salt. But in shrimp and prawn culture, you stabilize them with formalin at what you call one ppm. That's one meal of formalin in one liter of water. 
I hope you know that you can use formalin to cure fish disease. But if you know, if you're not an expert, don't be too, because you will kill people. You know, the formalin absorbs the skin of the of the fish absorbs formalin. If formalin is attached to the flesh of the fish, it takes time to go. So which means you have to follow that fish for a very long time so that the formalin gets out of the body before it can sell it. That is why also in fish, sorry I'm jumping between fish and shrimp prawns. I want you to understand it. It's the same thing. That is why in fish farming, I tell people use salt to treat disease. Don't use antibiotics. You know what? Antibiotics, when you use it, especially for pregnant women, and you abuse it, do you know what happens? The child comes out with brown teeth and brown fingernails. I'm sure you've seen some of your friends who have it. That is the effect of abuse of antibiotics in pregnancy. So if you cannot, if you're not an expert, don't do things that uh, you can't uh, control. Next slide, sir. Now, this is the shrimp we are talking about, Pinus Monodo. If you go to some shops in Abuja here, you can buy five of them for 15,000. I'm telling you. 250 grams, 300 grams, one. Between 250 to 500 grams. People wake up in the food. But the truth of the matter is that you can also use it, they can also export it. Who has eaten fisherman soup here before? You have. You see that big thing they put on top? Eh? Don't be crap. Not finish me. That's it. They put, that's why, how much did you eat? The last time you ate it, how much did you pay? Eh? Ah, that means, the way, where are we? In Akwaibo. 8,000 naira for a plate of soup. That's because this one is there. So because of the value of this and the money you can get, that's why we started culturally, we started the culture of the um, penis monodon shrimp in Nigeria. Next slide. Now, how did we start the culture process? Here, you see where fishermen are sorting out, when they drag, they carry both fish and shrimps. So what happens? They have to sort, sort out the shrimps that we want from the fish. And then they will put them in, we tell them to put them in containers like this. No. With attached with aerators, we give them enough battery. So from the high sea, they will bring this shrimp for us live in Lagos. Then we pick them up and take them home. You see, that's what they do. They sort. It's not a, it's not a sometimes because the smell, the smell that comes from the river, the sea, if you're not strong, you will vomit. The first time I went out to sea, we haven't passed uh, East Moor. Aha. I begin the hell, I have to go back. Because you're not steady. You are rocking. I tell you, you're rocking like this for, two, for one full month. So that when you come down to land and you're going, you come down from the vessel, people will think you're doing guy. Don't be guy. You're not, you're not normal. And then you're in the sea there, you're drinking uh, abomin and uh, salt in the water so that it stabilizes your stomach. Yes. Even though as you eat, 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 as you eat, it wow. yes. happened to you, bro? Yes. Well, at the point there, they say, tie him, tie him, tie him. <laughs> That'd be good. Tie him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's what happens on board. So if you're not strong, you can't, you can't go. Right. But you know the beauty of it? There's money in the sea. 
when they pay you the money for some, when I was much younger, when they pay the money, when I come down to land, <laughs> uh, I lie. when I come down to land, I shall run <laughs> And so they share where they, that's the we share you person sharing the money. Because you know that in the next uh, two two weeks, they are back. That time we used to wear combat trousers. It's plenty pocket. 10, 10, 20, 20. Winter road. You know? I'm trying to encourage you young boys. But you have to do it for a short time. So that you have sense of family. If not, you don't go marry them. The life is too sweet. Too much money. Too much group. Boys. And when they are in this maturation times, we feed them with squid. You know squid? There's a fish they call squid. It looks like octopus. We cut it up and throw it inside the water tanks for them. So they are eating. This water you see here, this is a tank. It's a circular tank. The water you see here is not fresh water. It's sea water. Sea water that is treated with chlorine and sodium thiosulfates. We use sodium thiosulfate to check whether the chlorine has evaporated so that you can use them to store your fish at 35 uh, pipits. Because we are close to the sea, we can play this game. But if you're in Abuja, uh, in Busa and the rest, you can play with macro breaking, which is a freshwater cousin. Oh, I'll go back. No, I'll go back. Now, you see what he's doing. As we continuously check, feed them. Bet between the carap, carap uh, you know this shrimps have what you call carapace at the back here. After the head, you have the, the carapace. Under that carapace, you have a diamond-shaped structure. It spreads like this. It has stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Once you go into the dark, you use a torch and you push it by the belly of the shrimp. You will be able to see the different stages. By the time it's getting to stage four, by the time it gets to stage four, you know that it's time for that prawn to lay these eggs. So you prepare a tank, cover that tank with a black tarpaulin, and leave the female there. After some time, if you go back and check, you will see that the eggs have been laid. Then you remove the female, put the female in a different container, and start watching the eggs for them to hatch. So that he's trying to do that to check whether the shrimp is, is ready. But if that's when it gets to stage four, you can do that. But when the shrimp is in stage two or three, you know what we do? Who has looked at the shrimp very well or prone? You know that they have one eye here that has a ball. That black ball is the eye. This is the stalk. There's something we call, we do, we call it eye stop ablation. You use thread to cut up, to subject the eye from the stalk. Once you do that, there's a hormone that is triggered in the female that will start the development of the eggs for maturity. That's the same thing you do in catfish when you administer overprint to the female. The process of vitrogenesis kicks off. Sorry. Vitrogenesis is shedding of eggs. That happens to every woman here. Every month, right? That's vitrogenesis. And it's triggered by the hormone that is in your pituitary gland, which is at the back of your head. Every animal has it too. You have it. And that is why in those days we used to use papa. They used to use the urine of pregnant women for, for injecting 
catfish. Yes. But we couldn't continue that practice because that means the farmer. You understand what I'm talking about? The wife will have to be constantly, uh, and you know, saying I walk. So go to the next slide. Next one. Now, in a well designed shrimp or corn hatchery, you must have where you keep the brood stock. I've told, I told you how to keep the brood stock and feed them with squid. You must have spawning and hatching units. Spawning unit is where the eggs, hmm? if you may lays the egg, the hatching unit is where you, the eggs will hatch. So do you know what we do? You know that we cover the container with a black this thing, black tapolin. So we get a torch. You shine the torch at one spot. All the nucleus will come to that spot where the light is. Then you use a hose. You know how you suck fuel from can. You use a hose at that point where they are gathering and suck. All the nucleus will enter your container. You clear that tank. Take the nucleus and introduce into your hatching uh, units and leave them there to start to 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 hatch and con the hatching is continuous. And that's how we come to the end of the program Aqua Farming on your first agricultural TV station in Nigeria where we brought to you ornamental fish business practices. Until some other time, I remain your Aquaman. You can call me that because we make sure we bring to you all need to know that is in the water. See you same time, same station. Bye for now.